afternoon, Stafford ECC families. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Tracy Talbain, and I am proud to serve as your principal at Stafford Early Childhood Center. The purpose of this presentation is to continue our efforts to keep you informed of important information activities happening at our school. As in our last town hall meeting, the information I share today is centered around five guiding principles of our district's Safe Start Plan. They are providing our families with accurate and timely information, the health and safety of our students and faculty, resources to ensure the continuity, mental health and well-being of our students and staff, high quality instruction, and educational equity for all of our scholars. At Stafford Center, our mission is to build the foundation for kinder readiness by providing social emotional support and the essential resources needed for success through partnerships with our families and community members. Our vision is every child and family kinder readiness. This afternoon, I will share information regarding how our transition to in-person learning is going and how it will look based on parent choice for the third and fourth six weeks. Reinforce the safety protocols that our campus has put in place to ensure a safe learning environment for our students. I will remind you of the resources that are available to our students and families to promote their social and emotional well-being. And finally, I will discuss school choice and zones of innovation. Our guiding principle number one is accurate and timely information. Over the next few minutes, I will share our attendance rates and highlight ex examples of great work from our students and our teachers. Whether your child is reinforcing or receiving on-site or remote instruction, Head Start is a school readiness program. It is important to establish a regular routine of attendance. We encourage parents and guardians to bring their children to school on time every day. Our district website has specific training videos for parents on how to use our online learning platforms. So if you need any information at all about ways to support your child's learning, please let us know and we will get the information you need. While all of our teachers and staff are working diligently to prepare and deliver high quality lessons, I would like to give special recognition to Ms. Hasso as an example of just how hard campus staff are working for our students. Ms. Hasso has such high standards for her students. She provides a warm classroom setting that su supports the social emotional needs of her students. She provides interactive lessons and project-based activities for her learners. In the same manner, students are doing exciting things. Here you can see Jeremy. He is utilizing his math resources to complete math computations. Yes, this four-year-old is adding single-digit numbers with the use of counters, his hundreds chart, and the instruction of his amazing teachers. These are just a couple examples of what makes our school family so special. Our goal for the third grading period is to ensure that 100% of our students are actively participating in lessons every day. Thank you again for supporting your children in achieving this important goal. Continuing with guiding principle number one, I want to share some important dates with you. During the week of December 8th through the 11th, many of our high school students will be taking the end of course STAR exams. December 14th is the deadline for parents to submit the parent commitment form for the fourth grading period that begins on January 11th. Students of, of parents that do not complete the parent commitment form by the state will be placed in a remote learning option for the duration of the fourth six weeks which means they will continue to work from home using their technology to connect to teachers. December 8th is an early release day and the end of the third six weeks. Students will be released at 1130 on this day. Students will have winter break from December 21st through January 1st. January 4th through the 8th is an intercession week for students who need extra practice or intervention. If your child is selected for this extra work, 
your teacher will let you know before the winter holidays. January 11th is the first day of the fourth six weeks and return of all students from the winter holidays. Guiding principle number two centers around health and safety. So I want to let you know how we are reinforcing our safety plans. I will also share the plans we have in place if ever one of our students or staff members develops symptoms or test positive for COVID. I am sharing this information to reassure you that safety remains our number one priority and sharing ways we plan to ensure a safe learning environment for our students. As we come upon the December 14th deadline for parents to submit the parent commitment form for the fourth grading period that will begin on January 11th, we want to review the different types of learning models we have available for all students. The first is on campus which we want 100% of our students to eventually return to. At this time, we have 171 students on our campus full time. It has been going very well and all of our safety plans are in place. I will review those in a bit. The second option is the remote learning option in which students work from home using their technology. At this time, we have 88 students participating in this model. Our attendance rate for the first 12 weeks of school is currently 93.7%. Remember, your child is present when they are in person and in class, attending remote classes with their teacher or engaged in a class remotely without the teacher. As we approach the second semester, we would also like to remind you that students must be in attendance 90% of the time in order to receive completion of the Head Start program. If your child is in pre-K through fifth, attendance is taken daily. I encourage our children to participate every day. It is so incredibly important that our students are actively engaged in their learning and we need your support to make sure that they do not fall behind. At this time, I would also encourage parents of students that are struggling with remote learning to return to campus for face-to-face -face instruction. We want our students to be successful and make sure they are getting the individualized instruction that each student needs. Please consider what is best for your child, emotional, academically, and health-wise. As we transitioned more students onto campus during the second six weeks, we saw more students engaging in their learning activities and excited to see their classmates in person. As the second semester begins in January, we are planning to continue classrooms that are providing on-site in-person instruction to our students and a couple of classroom teachers that will provide remote instruction to some of our students. Again, safety is our number one priority and I want to ensure, ensure you that our campus continues to ensure safety procedures and protocols are in place as more and more students return to our campus. Our district and campus have taken safety measures that include the use of personal protective equipment or PPE by every staff and student disinfectant spray and paper towels in every room, hand sanitizer stations spread throughout the campus, and regular deep cleaning by our custodial team. Before I take a few minutes to review some essential parts of our campus safety plan, I want you to know that we put safety as a number one priority because it allows our students to focus on their number one priority, and that is their learning. Of course, each week prior to students arriving to campus, students are completing Dr. Owl. Staff members complete this daily prior to entering the building. This health screener helps to ensure that students, staff, and visitors that enter the building verify they do not have any COVID symptoms. When students arrive, the first thing they see are screening stations in the entryways of our building. 
Campus staff are there to greet them, take their temperature, and provide hand sanitizer before ushering them into the building. Students receive a breakfast bag and go directly to their classroom using designated hallways, traveling in the same direction while maintaining social distancing. As you can see on the slide, signs have been placed throughout the hallways, entryways, and on the floors to remind students to stay six feet apart, washing and hand sanitizing their hands regularly, and walking one way to avoid cross contact with their peers. Students transitioning during the day have been limited to entry, outdoor learning, and dismissal. When students do move during the day from one location to another, they will do so in a staggered way to avoid large groups traveling at the same time and social distancing will be required. When students enter their classroom again, they see signs and floor markings that show directions to walk. Students eat breakfast from 730 to 8 in their classrooms before getting the day started with their morning message at 8 a.m. Parents, please support our instructional program by having your students on time to start their day. Throughout the day, we have specific times for hand washing and restroom breaks. For lunch, students eat in their classrooms, maintaining social distancing at all times. Parents, thank you for reinforcing how important it is for your children to follow our campus safety procedures. Our entire staff is paying careful details to safety practices to ensure that your child is healthy and safe, but we cannot do it alone. It takes a full partnership between our students, families, and school personnel to make this work. If a student is symptomatic and tests positive for COVID while on campus, we immediately refer them to the nurse, call home for pickup and sanitize areas on the campus and notify all parents that we have a positive case on campus. We also have a safety plan for staff if one were to become symptomatic and test positive for COVID while on campus. We immediately have them leave the campus, thoroughly clean the areas in the school, notify families of positive tests, and staff members will be out until they have medical clearance from their doctor. If you have not already seen them, we have some time, to, you have some time to view our school safety reentry plan that is located on our campus website. You'll also find a reentry video that details some of what I have shared with you and how to ensure the health and safety of all of our face-to-face -face learners. The video provides information on everything from our entry points for each grade level, the signs around campus that will be used to ensure social distancing, check-in stations for every staff member and student, and a variety of other helpful information meant to inform our community. Guiding principle number three focuses on continuity, mental health, and well-being. We are all still sharing the stress of the unique situation that the pandemic has put us in. I would like to take this opportunity to remind you of the resources in place to assist with the mental health and well being of our families and students. Our family social workers continue working together to reach out to students and families that may have unique challenges and get them connected to school and community resources. These services include academic supports and social emotional supports and may involve individual or group counseling, behavior intervention supports, home visits, attendance initiatives, family crisis response, homelessness, school age parenting, and resources for parents, mental and physical health care services, utilities, and shelter, just to name a few. As a reminder to our families, Edgewood ISD's community resource officers assist families in a variety of ways, included with food distribution, assistance with clothing and household appliances, mental health and hygiene, and in connecting families with nonprofit organizations for more urgent needs, such as rental assistance and or shelter. Their services are available 24 hours a day, 
seven days a week and may be reached anytime at 210-444-4558. Community Labs is an organization that is working with school districts, businesses, and communities to create COVID-19 safe zones throughout our city. Being part of this program, it allows us to provide an additional layer of safety for those attending school in person and enhancing the safety reopenings of our schools. They provide pain-free front nostril PCR test kits that are easy to use and are self-administered on site. Results are given within 12 to 24 hours. Our guiding principle number four is high quality instruction. To ensure that each of our students receives high quality instruction at Stafford ECC, we have put into place specific plans to respond to students or staff members that may become ill during the day or who have been exposed to COVID-19. For the next few minutes, I will share our plan so that you know exactly what actions the school will be taking. Right before the break, we hope you got a chance to attend our virtual school choice fairs to learn all about the school choices you have in Edgewood ISD. The Smart School Choice application for 2021-22 is now open to our families, is 100% online, and only takes a few minutes to fill out. All families, including those students residing in Bear County, but outside of EISD, have the opportunity to choose what school their child attends. Please visit the, excuse me, please visit the website listed on the slide to apply. Deadlines for applications is February 10th, 2021. As I shared during our last town hall, high quality instruction works best when there is a partnership between the parents and the school. At Stafford Early Childhood Center, we are committed to strengthening our partnership with our parents to ensure every one of our students has the opportunity to be successful and to thank you for your active participation and support of your child's education. The week of just what I'm sorry, the week of December 21st, Stafford ECC will be having its first virtual holiday program. Dates and times of the classroom performances were sent home in the monthly calendar. Families will receive a Teams invite to join their child's virtual performance. This year looks like no other year, and yet despite the challenges from this pandemic, I want you to know that we are in it together and we will get through it together. As I close, I want to emphasize that our district's number one outcome goal is to graduate all scholars, college, career, or military ready per their graduation date. This afternoon, I shared information that is centered around the five guiding principles of our district's Safe Start Plan. Specifically, providing our families with accurate and timely information, the health and safety of our students and faculty, resources to ensure the continuity, continuity mental health and well-being of our students and staff, high quality instruction, and educational equity for all of our scholars. We are grateful for the opportunity to serve your child's educational needs and appreciate the continued support and partnership. Again, thank you very much for your time today. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Please remember to contact me if you ever have any questions or concerns. My email address is ttolbane at eisdnet and my office phone number is 210-444-7900. Again, thank you for attending tonight. We look forward to seeing you guys at our Christmas performance on the week of December 21st.